Back from the dead, a week off of, uh, is Frank. So, you know what, Frank, just do your thing that you do. Thanks. Welcome to the Pat Oates Show, POS. Pat Oates' co host is Bobby Tamburo. And tonight's special guest is the adult film star Jessa Rain and comedian Rich Butters. Take it back, Pat. Wow, you came back good at your job. Yeah, what I happened? Know. Yeah. Bobby, that was I the practiced. best he's ever done. Yeah, I know. Well, well, the I names think were... he died a little bit last week and saw God, and God was like, you better pick it the shit up. I gave you Bobby and Pat to carry you. If you don't get famous in these last four years, it's not going to happen. And I like you said adult film star. That made it. That was nice. Well, I did research, and, you know, what? It, I, to me, that was the best way to do I call it research, Don't too. tell her about your yeah. research. Thank you, Blue Chew. <laughs> <laughs> Lucha wouldn't work. He's 80. I don't think anything works on that. <laughs> you crush it up, make a paste, and just wrap it around like a like a cast. Yeah, your wife could put it in like bologna, like they feed a dog, and just put it in there and feed it to you. <laughs> Frank, uh, no. Essa has an OnlyFans. You haven't been on one of those yet. You should go on those. Yeah. And what does she have? OnlyFans, the thing I always tell you you should get. Right. Oh, yeah. no, I didn't. Get I all sexy that. on there. I want Frank to be on there. Oh. <laughs> Is there anyone that old with an OnlyFans, Jessa? Have you seen is, is there really old women with an OnlyFans? Uh, there are some milfs and some gilfs on there. So and yeah, only gilf, not eighty. <laughs> I mean, uh, on my agency, there was one that uh, what's her name, Sally D'Angelo. She's a gilf. She's probably like up there. I can't remember how old she was. But... I don't think they should use that term. It's not a guilt for anyone wants to fuck. It's just an old lady that gets fucked. I mean, <laughs> nobody wants to fuck a grandma. I mean, come on. Milf, I understand, but grandma. Yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> so wait, Frank would be a guilt too, because you're, oh, you're not a grandpa. You're just an old Just an old oif. man. What's an oif? I'm just an old guy. That's old, old I'd like to fuck. An old guy. <laughs> but my sweet spot, Jess, is 89 to 93. So, I mean, that's <laughs> tough. That's tough to fill. And yeah. as I'm getting older, it's getting really tough to fill. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's the same way, but not age, pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I like him emaciated. I like a nice 89-pound adult. But, sorry, but not midget, like six feet tall. Just yeah. nothing but ribs. <laughs> yeah, real real Picasso woman. You know, just yeah. eyeball. That's what, I, that's what I call her. You're a real Picasso. <laughs> You're a Picasso, you fuck. <laughs> Uh, so, Bobby, how are you? Doing pretty well, man. Yeah. Uh, I got two guest spots this weekend. Comedy's certainly back. It was awesome. My brother uh, bought one of those Pujol shirts from Eastside Dave and is sending it to my son to wear it. So, And he said you did okay this week. He said you're doing all right. Yeah. He, appreciate, he appreciated the way you <laughs> introduced. He likes the changes you've made. He thinks you're doing well. Wait, on this show or on Eastside Dave? Everything <laughs> that you're doing. Okay, he says that you're really dude, stepping it up. I put in the performance of a lifetime last night on Eastside Dave. Two I didn't talk to him the last two days, so I don't know. Me, he might not harder. be pleased with last night. We'll find out. But. <laughs> Ask him what he thought of the Madonna impression. That's all I really care about. Yeah, and again, will. if you want to care about that, every Tuesday, seven thirty, Compound Media, Eastside Dave show with Roy Harder. And so you guys know my Listen, brother isn't in comedy or anything. Show, right? He just likes to tell me that Bobby does things wrong every week and watches <laughs> it. Tells me, sends me notes to send to Bobby. And not only for Bobby, for every podcast I do, but anyone else that's on it, he likes to critique them and tell them how to be better. So. He's also pretty spot on, to He's be fair. dead on. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a lot it. of times people give you advice and you're like, oh, fuck that. Usually he gives it to you and you're like, yeah, I was thinking that or, oh, that's a good point. So. Yeah. He I mean, he's been he's, wa- he's been watching Kumia since Kumia was in Boston. You know, we were listening to him, so he's been paying attention for fucking ever. And just so. a good news, he actually has some pointers for you. He studied your films as well, and <laughs> will send those over after the show. His his wife will not allow him to study any films. <laughs> but, uh, Rich, what have you been up to? I've been up to nothing. Uh, it was very nice to be referred to as a as a stand up comic. Uh, as you know, I'm quite a failed stand up comic, and I've been more of a machinist for the last. I 10, did write 15 that years. in the intro, but Frank forgot to say failed comedian and machinist. I, I love being called a failed uh, comic. It's but right now I'm a failed machinist too. Fucking COVID. <laughs> I'm gonna say this out loud so people are gonna, you're not a failed comic. You just couldn't do comedy at the time. You're actually a funny guy that shouldn't have quit, and all these fuckers stayed that shouldn't have that should have quit. Oh. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna totally Mike Hanley it, and I'm gonna come back as an old fuck and uh, and start over, which is great because I can use all my old material. 
He crushed uh, when he came back, though, which is amazing. Yeah, he killed. He killed it. Uh, can I still make Sopranos jokes? I mean, will anybody get that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <he will. laughs> no, more than ever, because now everybody just streams shit. No, uh, that's true. Thank you, COVID. There you go. It's the only and person dude, thanking. All COVID. kidding aside, COVID <laughs> has made any reference fair game again because yeah, all you have to be like is, well, I rewatched this during the pandemic, and people are like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I get why he was just sitting inside watching movies from the eighties. Yeah, almost every reference. Now, like, like the last two weeks, they're mad I make fun of Chinese people. Now, <laughs> they used to be the one race that could take a joke. It used to be, but now there, there's a whole group of white people that are saying, don't make fun of Asians. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's us that can't handle it. Thanks, yeah. white people. Thanks. They ruin everything. They really <laughs> do. I mean, accidentally, the we're here. They all brought us over. But besides that, you know, it's like. I, I accidentally called my son a fag the other day. I thought that was going to be the end of the world. How was it the oh, accident? No. <laughs> what were you trying to call him? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think it was a reflex from the 80s where everybody was a fag. You know, it, uh, it was just terrible. I, I felt really dude, bad. But I forgot. And I said fag. That, that's nice. Yeah, I would say son. They came out as fag. Like, oh, no, oh, you fag. You took the last of my vape. But did he respond and go, dad, how'd you know? And then just ruin your day? Oh, like, <laughs> that would have been amazing. Yeah. He said, <laughs> you helped him come out of the closet in the most amazing way ever. Yes, <laughs> yes, non-judgmental. <laughs> Your instincts are spot on. It's incredible how you did Real that. talk, when you got, what did uh, Child Protective Services say? How'd you get him to let you go? Uh, he's 21. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I'm <laughs> old. Fair game. <laughs> yeah. um, you, you, you go on Opie's show once in a while without doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a. I've always been a. I've always been a big Opie and Anthony fan. Um, I actually hated them when, when they were in Boston because I was just such a WBCN snob. And uh, but man, when they came back, uh, I think the first bit that I heard were them talking about fishing, and Jim Norton was saying how how easy anything that can fit in their mouth and, and the fish will take it. It's not a sport, and that was like the first like. The first thing I was exposed to Opie and Anthony, and I thought it was fucking brilliant. Um, but yeah, I, um, I, uh, I've been on Opie's podcast a couple times. I'm a, I'm a big fan of both of them still. I kind of lean more towards Opie just because, uh, you know, it's free. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but my, the only my, reason to lean more towards Opie. That's for one main, main race. Uh, my, my son-in-law and my grandson actually love, uh, love uh, Anthony's shit. So. I love all his episodes when I'm on it. <laughs> like you've raised a great family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, let's, Frank, are you ready? I see you're sipping your tea. I don't want you to do a spit that you ready. I'm ready. Just making sure. I have to check in. I'm, re I'm ready. I'm go. You could start the machine anytime you want. I've been recording. This is not just a catch up. We're not doing like singles <laughs> dating. Frank. This is, we've been recording the entire time. It's live. Okay. Let's go. Good. Couple busted for explicit oral sex romp in Florida. A man performing a sex act on a woman in a Florida park was busted by a cop who wrote a detailed erotic novel style description of the romp <laughs> in the police report. Grant Mulder, 48, and Lauren Baugh, 41, were spotted getting frisky at 1.45 p.m. Saturday in Largo Central Park near Tampa, according to police affidavits obtained by the smoking gun. This is what the policeman wrote. She was lying on her back with her legs spread apart and her vulva <laughs> exposed as her boyfriend and co-defendant to perform cunnilingus on her. Officer Lawrence Trinker wrote in a police report. Hold on. The, the wannabe romance novelist cop added that Cunnilingus is better known as the union of the mouth <laughs> with the vulva. In case you <laughs> The couple's steamy moment, which happened amid spring break crowds in the area, was potentially visible to park goers, motorists and pedestrians from a highly trafficked roadway nearby, according to the police report. There was an indication of alcohol, no shit, about the lovebirds, who both had criminal histories, according to the report. Mulder was charged with lewd and levacious behavior, while Bao is facing a rap for exposure of sexual organs. Bao posted on $100 bond. The other one got out on $600 bond. Previously, Bao had been arrested for burglary theft, trespassing, and possession of an open container. Mulder's rap sheet includes <laughs> convictions for aggravated assault, grand theft, battery, and disorderly intoxication. Who's the Question. piece of shit in this Question. article? Question. What were the two bonds? What the guy? What was the guys and what was the girls? Oh, maybe one hundred and six hundred. Who got the six hundred? Mouth uh, Cunnilingus giver, not Cunnilingus receiver. Cunnilingus <laughs> giver owed more. Okay. okay. Yes. Not the open container. No, that's what that that was her nickname in high school. Open container. <laughs> open container. 
Who's the piece of shit in this story? Is it the, the guy for get, convincing a woman to let him go down on her in a park that's all highly traffic? Is it the woman who we all know is the one that convinced him to do it? That's how that works anyway. Is it the police officer for writing a fucking steamy ass sex <laughs> novel and then using the word vulva, which is not hot in any fucking way, shape, or form? So and they said it's steamy, but there was nothing in there that was steamy. Like if you're gonna do, there's so much more you could have written to make that hot. And that was not hot. That was very like scientific and a little bit gross. And the fact he was condescending with it, like by the way, for those who don't know, <laughs> like, fuck you, M- Mister. I-, I eat pussy all day. You're a goddamn. Hot. What are you doing? <laughs> Is it the passerbys for not doing – they're saying there, they didn't really do much. They all just said they could see it from there. But we didn't hear about honking or waving or joining in. Like, you're driving by. It's an open park. It's the one place you can perform. As Bobby knows, as a comic now, especially in New York, <laughs> it's the only place you can perform until, like, a week ago. So I think if they want to do it, they're doing it out in the public, and it's fine. Or is it the person who wrote this article who was upset, obviously has no writing skills because they're like, oh, good. A police officer did better writing than me. Let me put this out there. <laughs> Frank, we'll start with you. Uh, I it, It's it's the writer. I mean, the two people involved. The writer, the cop, or the, the article writer? No, no, no. The writer who wrote that article. Okay. Because the, the, two, the two participants seemed willing. I don't see anybody balking about that. Her name's Natalie O'Neill. That wrote the article for the Post. Okay, Natalie, you know, grow a pair. I mean, these people were doing what That's they wanted to were. do. I'm sorry? Women don't grow pairs. Well, in yes, my they, name, they can now. They, they do Excuse now. Use yourself. They don't they do can now. Now. Use yourself. <laughs> they can, they can get can some. Now. They don't grow them. They know, No matter what's happening, they don't grow them. They can get they them. Order them after they, they get them. them. Okay, <laughs> that's like growing them. Okay, so... So anyway, so they were doing what they wanted to do. The passerbyers did not complain. The people in their cars did not complain. The cop started to write a novel. We have to give him a pass because of what's going on now with the, with the, with the police force. They, they're under fire. They're under stress. But these they're people under- aren't black. I don't. They were know. black and doing this. They get shot matter. with the Volvo. It doesn't, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter if they were black or orange. Black or green. If it was black, it would be eating our pussy. Nah. Yeah. Anyway, it wouldn't so, be black. So black, black men don't go down on women. We all know that. And and he he was reaching back into his past that he wanted to be a writer. He's reaching God. back to his high school days, and he always what was he writing write? in high school. <laughs> Well, this is what he wanted to write. That's why he's a cop. And so this is what happened. You got to give him a pass. It all falls to that writer of the, of the piece. She was a piece of shit. How do you not cover this <laughs> article? It's got it's the greatest thing handed to you as a writer. You're like, what happened? Well, by well, the way, if you look at the picture, the guy, none, the guy none, is of the parti- none of the participants are a piece of shit. The passerbyers are a piece of shit because they let it happen. Well, they are pieces of shit. They have a big tra- like a big rap sheet. Like one, one guy had like he beat people. They didn't They're not good folks. They didn't he complain. Reformed his life. He's making love, not war anymore, Pat. Well, he was assaulting and battering her pussy with his mouth. That's what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, that's well, not, I, I look at it people. totally different. The dude had grand theft, an aggravated assault, battery, and disorderly intoxication. As far as we're assuming, she wanted to do this, but he sounds like a so mean he got man. Into a he bar like told her, man. "You better let me eat out in the park, or you're, not, you're living outside." We don't know. He sounds mean. Then again, she also. Did burglary, theft, trespassing, and possession of an open container. It sounds like two people that nobody else wanted just found. You know, hard. I may change my mind here. I think that a cop, <laughs> the cop is the piece of shit. Because you said he was oh, a, come on. I said he was an aspiring novelist. He got me at the beginning. And then after you read the charges, none of the charges are, the, are, are explained no, those were, in, no, in the Frank, warrant. Frank, 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 I what? know you're old. Those aren't the charges from this. Oh, oh, those are previous charges. What, what burglary happened? <laughs> you just, you just stole her. There was innocent. only one open no, container. This is their past thing. Are you okay, Frank? Well, I, I, I assume when you started reading the charges that I was, other things you were going on. You said they're good people, and I was telling you they're right. not. I can explain. What's okay, going so on. okay, so we're making time. assumption. We're making assumptions. Hold on, here. Frank. One second, Bobby. Help me here. Frank's having a hard time because he's on with Jessa. And right now, all the blood that normally goes to his head 
is rushing to his penis. What? And to be fair, that's a sensation he hasn't had in probably about 20 years. Frank, so yeah. this is a new experience. He doesn't no. know how no, to handle Frank's blood no, Bobby, all the Bobby. Bobby. You go to comedy shows, there's young waitresses. Frank's got a boner all the time. Bobby, <laughs> at 80, it doesn't rush there. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's jaywalking. It doesn't rush there. <laughs> If it's rushing there, that means I got to go to the bathroom. I mean, that's the only thing that means. So, Frank, it's it's the cop. I'm I'm, I'm no, it's not the cop. Frank, what the fuck? All right, we got to. I, I got to move. Uh, on. It's not the cop. It's Jester, the writer the of, of the shit? piece. Frank, no. It's Frank, Natalie. No. It's Frank? Natalie. It's Nat- okay, it's Natalie. Jessa, who's the piece of shit in this story? Besides uh, Frank. <laughs> I'd say the cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he wrote. Oh, that's weird. What he wrote, yeah. like. I, you know, like, if, what if it was like a something worse? Like it was a murder. Is, does he write like that with that too? It's like you the vicious stabbing. He tore each organ out. To part about, like, it's weird. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah. It's yeah. The, I would think. Butters? Well, I think it's uh, pretty clear cut to me. Uh, the piece of shit is uh, Captain Pussy Eater because he wasn't wearing a mask and he wasn't social distancing. No, <laughs> not even close. Yeah. Unless yep. he was six feet tall. <laughs> Fair point. Fair yeah. point. Yeah. Does that count? Where do you have to be six feet from? The whole thing or just the head? I think you're going to be away from the mouth. Yeah. Although That's I think you can't eat. Up. You can't eat the butthole either now. I guess. Why? I don't know. In New York City, you can't eat buttholes. Well, I think was that a was just thing. a normal New York City rule. I don't think that was just a COVID rule. It's not a bad rule for New York City. It's not a bad here. rule for everything. <laughs> I don't think we should use bad, dude. You shouldn't be eating people. You you lick, you move your mouth around, but you're not actually chewing and digesting. That's gross. That's a good point. You you're not deriving sustenance. No, you're not. But that guy would have that the cop would have used the word sustenance in there. That vote had right. no sustenance. There, there is nothing. I, I love cops, man. My, my, my cousin Timmy ran his own SWAT team and stuff like that. And the best thing about cops is they don't know how to write. They right. don't know how to speak in an official capacity. They start throwing these weird words in this shit. I fucking love it. I love it when a cop's talking about something. Yeah, that cop is that- obviously trying to fuck some teacher or somebody he's trying to impress. <laughs> Look what I wrote. This wonderful. I wrote. I used the word Volvo that you taught me. <laughs> Vol- <laughs> Volvo. Safest car in America, by the way. <laughs> he was chewing on her Volvo and she got all excited. <laughs> <laughs> the old farfic nougat. Bobby, who's the piece of shit? I actually think there are three pieces of shit in this story. The first piece of shit is the cop who wrote him up for that. Like it's spring break. I promise you that's the least of your worries. Go stop an actual like rape or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like go but, but in his defense, real until crime. he got there and noticed it, he probably thought it was a rape. It's he in was the like, park. Hey, is this a rape? And she was like, No, nah, all right, cool. Like, is that how they do guys, it? Have a little hey, you're getting raped? Nah. Because, you know, she's not going to lie while she's scared for her life. <laughs> I, I'm not, there's a reason I'm not a cop. But he's the piece of shit. <laughs> Secondly, the writer. Because you know that cop went home to his girlfriend and was like, hey, babe, you know how you said I'm so bad at sexting? Natalie thinks I'm a steamy writer. And now <laughs> he's got this ego. Really, I he's texting her happens. giving her a dry pussy. Hey, babe. <laughs> the third piece of shit. The third piece of shit in the story is the dude. Because if you are going to perform publicly, and Jessa, correct me if I'm wrong here, you should be good at it. He should have been good enough at Conolingus that when the cop walked up on him, he saw him and was like, oh, my God, here's a tip. Thank you for the show. Go about your day. Like, you need to have a better game than what he had. Yeah. So they're all pieces of shit. A woman, she just wanted to have her pussy ate. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to I'm going to see your guy tipping the guy and and raise it one. It's the woman. And here's why. It's the one I know why it's the woman because here <laughs> she is. She's in the park. They're, they're they're two terrible people. They're not I'm not assuming they're not even in love. I think they were drunk at a bar and they just ended up in a park. This doesn't sound like a frisk, you know, like a fun what night love like anyway, walk Pat. whatever. What happened is the cop came over and the cop's obviously horny as fuck. He's so horny. He's writing vulva. He's writing cunnilingus. This dude is watching way too much porn. He probably, Jesse, we get his name. He probably subscribes to your homie fan. He seems like <laughs> very excited about sex to the point where he's writing that and then turning it in. He's turning it into his bosses. It's like, here's the report. And they're like, fucking seriously? Like, yeah, it's my third draft. I'm working on something. And they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> he's that horny. 
Once again, I'll go to Jessup. I've seen many porns. Usually when a cop comes in and a woman has to convince the cop she doesn't want to go to jail, all she has to do is blow him. If she blew that cop, there would be no article. There'd be no arrest. It's not like she was already in the mood. They could have just fucking spit roasted her. The other guy was already down there. Could have done another move. It's in the park. And then people wouldn't believe that. Like, oh, that guy must be a village person or like some kind of like role play. They wouldn't think he's a real cop and his uniform getting blown in the park. And who would tell him not to? And finally, a cop is getting blown instead of blowing someone's head off. That would be nice. So the cops, the, I mean, the woman is a piece of shit for not... What's the term for what's a fancier blowjob term? Not cunnilingus. Sucking his dick. That's not fancy. <laughs> How's that fancy? Felatio. 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 Hello, Felatio. Oh. Yes. Let oh, me fillet you. I hope somewhere there's a real dumb woman who named her kids Felatio and Cunnilingus. I hope so. There's two <laughs> children. I think that's some old hack joke. They call it Cunnilingus, but it never comes. Like, all right, that's, that's fine. Frank. <laughs> You have yes. a story this week? Yeah. yeah. I, I always got a story. Frank, what? this is how we do it every week. I, I'm not going to just say, tell your story. I ask nicely. Don't get mad at me. I know you have a story. Because every week, Frank has a background that tells about his story. So, now, Butters and Jess, just so you both know, Frank, for years and years and decades and decades and, and I think centuries, went around with another guy named Alan Abel and did incredible pranks and hoaxes and all these things for years and years before anyone ever did these things. And they never revealed the things. They went out there and they, they've tricked. They, they, Frank snuck into the Super Bowl and ran around the field. He got in trouble. He's, he's tricked famous people. He's, he's been like dignitaries, you name it, the feds, everyone, but never revealing, doing it in a way to help promote other people's things and stuff like that. So Frank reveals wow. those stories to us now and we get to decide. Usually, according to Bobby, Frank's always the piece of shit. But we'll see what you guys think. Frank, take it away. I'm just going to tell you, Bobby, I am not the piece of shit in this story. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Okay. Okay. So back in the day, in the 70s and the 80s, I used to do personal Christmas cards that I used to send out. And it became very popular. And by the time it was over, I was sending 2,000 cards out. So I decided to do a masterpiece in 1986. So that's 30 Wait, you know 2,000 people? Yes. At that time, I did. Not anymore. I don't know. So they're all dead now. Yeah. So what happened? You, so what happened? You had 2,000 subscribers on OnlyFans. That's a lot of people. <laughs> I know. Give us your list. The they're all dead funny. now. So, so what happens is that I decided that Jesus was going to be surprised with a birthday party by the 12 disciples. And so that's what I created behind me. It's the 12 disciples with Jesus having a surprise birthday party. And what I did, I recruited a lot of friends and customers from a food business I had in Greenwich. And the customers were basically qualified CEOs and high-end people from Greenwich. They thought it'd be a lot of fun. They knew my background of all the hoaxes I pulled, and they thought this would be a great time. So I set it up at a studio in Norwalk, and we have an open bar. I have food there, and they show up, and the first thing that I had to do was get them drunk because of what was going to happen. So I get them drunk, and um, in walk two women that were going to be the hostess at the, at the shoot. Now, plus I had a psychiatrist there to deal with any, any person that had a problem dealing with what I was going to do with religion. And then I had a priest from Rome come to bless the event that we were doing. And so we unveiled it and we had a procession into the studio and it just, it just got a little out of hand. I also, I had a filmmaker there to document it so that we could have some fun with it. And this is basically what happened. This was the shoe. Yeah. So now I got everybody set up. One difference is, wait, they're wearing masks. This happened last week. <laughs> no, they, no, the, two, the two women did not want to, <laughs> they didn't want their face to be out there. So that was the decided, problem, the face. <laughs> the face. So we did that. So the, with that, what happened was, it's too bad I can't show it. The priest that came in, he came in and he blessed the breast. I mean, it was just a, a wonderful scene to see. Uh, we captured it. We got a great shot. We got a great Christmas card. Um, I, I now have them in the back of my car 
and I go to Greenwich on Greenwich Avenue. Just so you two know, the Domino's guy is Frank. That's how long ago this was. That's yeah, this is me over there. He's not explaining the oh. part who he is. Yeah. <laughs> Original so, recipe, yuck. Yeah. So what happens is that I left my trunk open, and I had all these cards in my trunk. Yeah, I have one that you gave to me. A wind came, a wind came, and blew it all over Greenwich Avenue. (laughs) That's how 2,000 people got them. So what happened was one of the people in that picture was a high-ranking Greenwich official. He comes storming into my restaurant at at 8.30 in the morning. It was a breakfast and lunch place. He comes so, and he's got five copies of the cards. (laughs) And he said... (laughs) You said nobody was going to see this. It's all over Greenwich Avenue. And he really got upset. I have not spoken to him since then. <laughs> so who is the piece of shit? I, I will throw my name in it because Bobby will bring it up for creating this masterpiece. Is it the printer that printed this? Is it the guy that got mad at me and is still upset with me 35 years high later. ranking official a high ranking greenwich official okay. so who's so, the piece just of to get this straight That's... the choices are is it you who orchestrated this whole thing is it the person who you demanded printed this thing <laughs> that you orchestrated again right. or is it the person you lied to and tricked into being in this thing just so we're all clear here. those are the choices no he forgot a choice it's also him for making two women just be treated like shit. Look at those creeps. Look at all those Tom Selleck mustache creeps just staring at those women's tits. Those women, they have masks on because they're afraid. And Frank's like, I don't want any fear in my photo. So mask them up. So it could be that too. I mean, it was also what we did after the shoot. They were all drunk. After the shoot, we went down the main street in South Norwalk into the most popular restaurant at nine o'clock on a Friday night. The 12 of us walked in plus, uh, plus the two women topless. And we asked for a table for, you uh, were topless. The girls were topless. Oh, and the girls were topless. (laughs) It was just a lot of fun. It was just a lot of fun. So Bobby, you go first since you know. Piece of shit in this story frank is the high-ranking official in greenwich what? this is one of the greatest things i've ever seen you pulled off something really great there i i love it for the artistic expression behind it it's a hilarious take i love the fact that you work for Domino's. uh the printer he got along with it and it's the guy who was upset about it if he really had an issue with it he shouldn't have taken part and i understand right. him having an issue with it i personally don't but if he did he shouldn't have agreed to do it off off to the side and if he thought it was a fine thing, then stand for that publicly and actually stand for free speech or something. So for once, Frank, you are not the piece of shit. I appreciate <laughs> that, Bobby. Very I appreciate your ability to look inside of the photograph. Right, you guys Thank can you. do this later on your own. Jessa, who's the piece of shit in Frank's creepy picture? I would have to agree on the, uh, the Greenwich official guy being the piece of shit because he ultimately agreed to being a part of the picture. And if he... He didn't, he doesn't necessarily, that could be just your word saying, yeah, I won't be anywhere, but he doesn't know that. Like well, now, yeah. what year was this Frank? 1986. Okay. So this is before, no internet chance. No, nothing. No. This guy, that no. was the way you did things that by the way, Jess, I know he was, he trusted Frank. Frank's like, yeah. come on in. He's like, fine, I'll do this thing. Who will find out that's back then. That's when politicians could just diddle people and no one could say anything back <laughs> in the day. And now Frank, this guy's like, Oh, I can just go there and be a creep, whatever. And Frank broke his trust. Frank's a terrible person. You should say oh, Frank. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to argue right. that. I have to argue that. I'm going to tell you why. No, you don't. We don't he we knew my history. He knew lawyer. my history. He had my history. He knew it. He knew what I did. What's your history? You were the second person? <laughs> you said that like you were a gangster or something. You knew what I did. You knew what I said. <laughs> you knew. You knew. Yeah. Butters. Butters, who's the piece of shit? Uh, I hate to say it, uh, but I'm going to go Frank here because of the booze. You know, anybody can can make really good decisions when they're sober. Right. But when they're fucked up beyond belief, man, their dick is coming out and going straight in the punch. Look, people probably actually ate that shitty Domino's pizza. They were so drunk. So definitely, Frank. Well, it's 
you're right. But even think about more so, not even just the drinking. Frank knew this was bad. He got a psychologist in 1986. He got a psychologist to be there to make sure they were okay with what the fuck Frank was going to do with them. That is bored. That is Dexter like creepiness. That is master manipulator. Going, I'm going to fuck your head up so bad. I'm going to have help. So you can't tell. Ah, look at that I mean, smile. Look at that laugh on his face. Yeah. In a yeah. Place to exercise the shit. If the psychiatry doesn't the- work. Excuse me, Pat, but it was a priest from Rome. Rome. Yes. Yeah. Rome. A, a priest with pedigree. Yes. Yes. No, the Important. reason why I priest. made him from Rome is he had an Italian accent. What could I tell you? <laughs> Were they really, knowing Frank, they weren't a real psychiatrist and they weren't a real priest. No, no. The psychiatrist was real. It was a real psychiatrist. But it was a fake priest. But it was a fake priest, yes. It was definitely a fake priest. Oh, then that's definitely Frank then. Now you think these guys are going to get absolution? But it's a fake priest, so yeah. they're all in hell. They're all in hell. They got duped. Frank, it's you, but it's no. also not you. We're going to say it's you just because of this idea. This was for nothing. This is literally, you did all this for your Christmas card. This wasn't for profit. This wasn't for <laughs> advertising. You weren't working for Domino's. You weren't doing a fundraiser. You just had an excuse to get people drunk and get weird, get really fucking weird. And I, I that's fine, but it's also fucked up. But more that's important- shoot. If everyone what? here can right now stare at the picture with me, if you see where Frank Domino's Frank is, now Frank, move you, move your actual self out of the way. Next to the pizza is the only man who's not staring at the women or the camera. That man is in love with Frank. I want some man, the guy, the lower down guy with the hair pushed back, who's got like the, the no sleeves on, right there, is staring at Frank in the way. If I mean a meme, I'd be like. I want someone to <laughs> the way that man looks at Frank wearing a Domino's outfit. That man wants Frank's sausage pizza without the pizza. Real fucking bad. That guy went there. You invited that guy, Frank. In 86, people weren't allowed to come out. If he came out today, Butters would have called him a fag. But if you <laughs> back then, that guy got invited to have a party with you and drink. And he's like, ooh, finally, Frank knows my feelings. And then there's a bunch of other dudes. He goes, oh, yeah. It's a bunch of dudes. We're all going to have a sausage party. And then women showed up. Then he realized there's a psychiatrist and he wasn't going to fuck you. He is looking at you hard. And he's not looking at that pizza. Look at everyone else. The, one, the pimp in the right-hand side, he doesn't care about it. The rest of them with all eight Borats. If you look, there's so many men who look at Borats, <laughs> which is really fucking creepy. But everyone else is looking at tits. Even the, the women are looking for help. You can see that. The, the one that looks like Dee Snyder to the right, she... <laughs> She is looking for some serious goddamn help. They are afraid. How much did those things cost? Okay, Pat, number one. Answer my so... question. How much did you pay for the women? For the women? The women at the I had a, I had two, going I had two women lined up that was doing it that were friends, and then they canceled at the last moment. <laughs> I had to go professional. And the professional cost was I think four hundred bucks. Jessa, that's cheap nowadays, right? Well, no, 400, 200 you, you wouldn't do that. I'm saying you wouldn't do that for two, years ago. 10 dudes are like, come years. hang out. We're going to get drunk and get weird. And there's a psychologist. You need more money than that. Yeah. He's here. Yeah. <laughs> the, the whole shoot cost $3,000 to put that all together. You paid 3000 for all the other things, but one of the cheapest things you Well, the, the costumes, that, that drop was from a... a, from a, a a location in the city and the backdrop, but that costs about 500 okay, no, I'm saying, I'm, okay, so the backdrop costs more than the women. Right. You're okay with that. Yeah, I mean, the, the women, they, they, were no, they were, were not supposed to partake in any sexual favors during the night. But it got totally out of hand. <laughs> they it got totally to, out of hand. That's why this the documentary, <laughs> this documentary could bring down a lot of people. I can't show it to anybody. It's it could bring down what a lot mean, of people. You can't show it. You're eight. They're all dead. No, some of them are <laughs> alive. And Pat, what I wanted to tell you is that those women so, are dead. So right, you were so on point of what you were talking about making the sausage pie, but you had the wrong guy. No, that guy won. No, it wasn't which him. Which guy? Show me which him. guy wanted to fuck you. I can't. I, well, I can't show you that. I mean, they're I can't not going to watch this. How do you know? I know nobody watches this. Yeah, <laughs> what are you talking about? Nobody watches this. No, because why? Because Frank sends out an email the same way he sent that picture out. So whenever he promotes it, he sends it to all his email friends, and one of those guys is on there. That's what happened. Uh, a lot of them are on there. The piece of shit. All right, I, I'm. I can take that. I'll accept that. All right. Even though I, 
you know, I protest, but I'll. And you're it. running out of things because this isn't a prank anymore. Now you just. No, that wasn't. No, a this one was good. Bobby's <laughs> gonna do this. You guys are gonna remake this. I have a feeling. You are Frank and Bobby are gonna remake this photo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in. I'm not doing it. Just, uh, I know you said 200 was out, but if you had to throw a number out there to be a, you know, just just for hyperbolic purposes, what would you say? Who me? No, Jessa. I know. I was kidding. We're recruiting the picture, Pat. <laughs> You're gonna get. All you have to do is this, Pat. No. What? Okay, Frank. What did they actually have to do besides stand there like that? Okay, what they wound up doing is not what they that. wound up. That's how <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. No, nobody what wants the to know fuck? that. <laughs> I, 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 basically, I had the food catered for my for my business, and so they wound up staying and serving the food and eating with us. And so then you would we hire them got, to be like tit like tit waitresses. Well, they would they were hired to do the photo shoot. That was it. But oh, they so. like they were enjoying themselves so much they hung out with us for another three hours. But you got them for you paid for an hour. Well, I it was I negotiated the deal with their with their. I'm um, asking company. you. We're trying to negotiate with Jessa to see days this today's age how much you would pay oh. for it. So help oh, me okay. negotiate with Jessa right now. Hire her for your photo shoot. Uh, Jessa, uh, you you know what I want to accomplish. You know exactly what I want to accomplish. Sure. Yeah. I I would like to use your you say that to women. You know what I want to accomplish, girl. <laughs> you know what I want to accomplish. <laughs> I I would like two women. For a photo shoot, uh, it, it could be one hour, it could be three hours. I'm not sure, but I'm not looking for any sexual activity at all. I just want them to be part of the photo shoot, playing topless waitresses uh, for Jesus Christ's birthday party. How much would that cost me? It's on a Friday night, starting at six o'clock. Uh, I mean, I would say probably like anywhere from. 400 to like 600 maybe a girl though right a girl yeah, yeah. a girl yeah i mean i it was 300 i paid uh, for, they you just said to, it was 400 total before no no it was they originally it was on tape it was it was 300 <laughs> each they wanted 400 each and i said but there's you no them down involved. with jesus right there <laughs> i said there's no sex involved I mean, I'm. This is for a photo shoot. What are you doing? I'm not. And so he gave up. it to me for three hundred dollars each, with six hundred dollars. I can see Frank doing that. You fucking me, and I'm not even fucking you. Look at this. Jessa, Jessica, I think that's very fair. Those yeah. prices are extremely fair. Yeah. I right, mean, I may do this. Your party. I may reshoot this. Bobby, you want to get involved and reshoot it? Yes, I do. All right, I Bobby, you have a story. I do. All right. Let me just, before I get going, Jessa, you're killing it. You look very pretty. Uh, my story is, so I was walking out of the hotel today and I tripped over my dick and I bumped into the door guy and he said, you're an this asshole. The third week like, in oh, a row you made a dick reference, by the way, <laughs> about yourself and your giant cock. <laughs> Shh, Pat, I'm just trying to impress Jessa. <laughs> it's not working. Like she never impressed. heard that before. <laughs> yeah, then, wear, then wear a hat. It's not 95, Frank. She hasn't heard everything <laughs> online ever. <laughs> That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. It's like, all right, yeah, go answer ahead. your you question. Have, you have no, I don't story? have a story this week. No, I don't. Oh, what the fuck? All right. I just had a fun, fun little joke. It was Manhattan 7 Eleven worker punch called Chinese motherfucker. A Manhattan 7 Eleven worker became the city's latest suspected victim of an anti Asian crime with an attacker spewing, You Chinese motherfucker, as he punched him, police said Sunday. The 26 year old Asian victim was working at the Manhattan convenience store shortly. Before 6 a.m. Saturday, when his attacker stormed in without a mask and yelled the racial slur and slugged him, cops said. Cops said the victim, who suffered a cut above his under his left eye, had previously confronted the suspect after he allegedly tried to steal merchandise. Police had said initially the assault was not being classified as a hate crime because the attack was over a previous larceny, larceny in dispute. But the department later said Sunday that it was being investigated as a biased crime. There have been no arrests. Who's the piece of shit in this story? Is it obviously the man who punched a person and yelled out a racial slur? Which, by the way, 
didn't even try. I don't know if you guys know the history of Mark Wahlberg, the Marky Mark yeah. Punch, but Mark Wahlberg for a long time would look this up, would go around punching Asian people, and then he would yell it, and he yelled, "You Vietnamese fuck," which yeah. is one of my favorite things. So, and then when they someone said, "Did you do that?" He goes, "Yeah," and if I see him tomorrow, I'll do it again. And then he became famous after that. Like that's how handsome Mark Wahlberg is. He can do that. He used to chase black kids on the beach with his friends and throw rocks at them and call them the N word, and then brag about it. That was it's, it's all not good out there. Vibrations. It's, yeah, what? So that's not good vibrations. No, it's not at all. <laughs> the, no, those yeah. black kids. Well, no, the, the, the reparations were the black kids end up being in the funky bunch. That's what happened later on. They were part of the bunch. So he, he he's just like, hey, I'm going to appropriate your culture. That's how I'm going to pay you back. <laughs> so, he, is that was a felony. Who, con- go ahead. That was a felony conviction, and I think he blinded uh, a Vietnamese guy or deafened him. I think he blinded him. Blinded him, and he, yeah, and he can't. He can't vote because he that he went to jail as a felony, and he actually tried to get pardoned for that. And they're he all went on t- the Today Show. He went on yeah. the Today Show and asked Matt Lauer to pardon him, which is no thing. But like, <laughs> well, especially not Matt Lauer. Not this is he was like, hey, before I can. Matt Lauer. We didn't know. I can, but you're not going to like how what you have to do. You're not going <laughs> to like how you earn this pardon. You're going to be my open container. Yeah. <laughs> and this story isn't about Mark Wahlberg, and I knew it when I left her in there. But okay. Isn't this guy for doing a poor man's Mark Wahlberg impression by going and punching a guy yelling Chinese motherfucker? Because he wasn't even like, you, there's so many things you could call a Chinese person. Like, I would yell, I'm going to put a chink in your face and then hit him, or something like that. Do, do something where it's fun with it. You know, oh, this is a slippery slope. You, and then hit, if, something if, you, if you punch like somebody, if you punch something somebody, please just yell the Pat Oat show. Yeah. <laughs> Watch POS, you yeah. spooky Chinese motherfucker. Boom, and punch him in the face. Oh, get it out worry. there. Don't worry, you'll feel better in 15, 20 minutes, and then punch him in the face. It could be anything. Is it that guy? Is it the Chinese guy? For, for, for right from the beginning, saying, ah, don't worry, it's not a hate crime. This guy earlier stole stuff. <laughs> no, you should yell this out. But also, he's Chinese. Why doesn't he know karate? Why can't he fight it off? He's supposed to know karate. That's the rules. Is it the police for at first saying, nah, it's not really a hate crime in a time when people are being very mean to Asian people. And they're like, nah, it's previous stuff. He yelled Chinese motherfucker, not just motherfucker. He was a very specific kind of person that fucks a mom, a Chinese person, which by the way, I've never understood why it's an insult. Anyone married with kids is a motherfucker. That's what you do. You fuck their mom. That's just, it's a, it's a nice thing to say. If you never fuck the mom, then maybe that's a bigger insult. Who's the piece of shit in this story? Or is it Mark Wahlberg? Let's just offer him up to. Or, Always Mark Wahlberg. Sorry, Mark. And because of that, Butters, go first. All right. Uh, it's all right. So if somebody walked up to me and punched me and cut my eye, um, it probably wouldn't be because I was a Chinese motherfucker. No. I, I never under, really understood why, oh, it's worse of a crime because he said Chinese. And it, I'm thinking it's the guy that punched him. You do know why it's why why it's worse, right? I know you said uh, that, but you do, you are aware that he's once he if you just say motherfucker and punch someone, that's just an angry person. If you're yelling out their race, now it's a specific I hate your race. It is a hate crime. But what you if I yell out you punching bald you because motherfucker you're Chinese. and punch you? What if I just yell out you bald motherfucker and then hit you? My is feelings that, wouldn't be hurt, but, but there but are saying, people that out there that would say people, that's against bald people. There are morons who would say that. But do you understand the point I'm making? Like, he might have just, he's probably not the most intelligent person if he's assaulting somebody in a store. Maybe he didn't, like, he could only think of one adjective, which was you Chinese motherfucker. Like, he wasn't trying to be mean. He was just making sure he knew the guy was he was going to hit. When you run in a store and punch a guy, you're trying to be mean. <laughs> that's the hope. That's, there's no other feeling but mean. Sorry, Butters. I you're tried, not- man. I tried to have your back. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I don't I, mind I, losing I, this I was one. I just saying, obviously, there was... <laughs> reason for the old Chinese because he was Chinese <laughs> what if, what if, he, what if he was South Korean you know that even be worse is. and even Hello. the newspaper is like nope nope you're Chinese it's like, no but I'm it's South Chinese. Korean yeah, right, right. <laughs> a Mexican man what the fuck I'm, not even cool. I'm just high like, fucking Guatemalan <laughs> do they still make those I haven't seen one of those in forever <laughs> yeah, I got a new model at work. Nice. All right. So, who's the piece of shit? The guy? Uh, the guy that did the punching. Yeah. 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 That's usually how I would think of how this is going to go. Jessa, who do you think? 
Yeah, the guy who punched him, I'd yeah. say. But is he a piece of shit for punching or yelling Chinese or both? Uh, I guess both. <laughs> you guess. Yeah, you don't seem like you're bothered by that. If you were in that 7-Eleven and a guy ran, first of all, I'm gonna say this, but we'd all laugh. I hate to say that. If you were in a store and a guy ran in and yelled Chinese motherfucker and then punch a guy, <laughs> we would all laugh our ass. It's one of the it's gotta be one of the funniest fucking things of all times. I'd be relieved. Right. It's amazing. <laughs> but if Jessa was there, he'd probably see her and be struck by her beauty and just be like, oh, you know what? I'm not angry anymore. Or he'd be so mad. So mad, and uh, Bobby, you're getting borderline creepy, but um, it would, <laughs> it would get, he would be mad that Jessa would, he, he's not, I'm guessing he's not like a good looking man. I'm getting, if you're running in the 7 Eleven and you've been there and you've stolen from it and now you're punching the employees, I don't think you have a lot going for you. So I think he would be mad that someone like Jessa is there, like, this girl won't like me either. And he might have run and called her Chinese, then punched the guy. I don't think he would have punched her, but he might have called her Chinese because he does, you said he's not that smart. Maybe he doesn't, maybe he thinks everyone's Chinese. And by the way, when I hear that phrase, it makes me think of the, the Louis C.K. bit where he's like, Chinese is than a motherfucker. That's all I could think of the entire day. It's one of my favorite phrases. So it's, Frank, what do you think? I, I bet you don't I, think it's him. No, I, I you know what? I think, <laughs> you, I think you have to deep, go deeper into this. You have to go to a, Vietnam. Mark, you have to go to Mark Wahlberg. He's the one that started all this crap. This is why. You I know, he, let, listen, he set the bar so fucking low. I mean, he's five six. The bar is really Just low. Google his height. <laughs> I mean, he he set the bar so low that everybody is mimicking him, and that's the source of the problem. So I have to say, it's Mark Wahlberg for starting this. I crap. think he set the bar high for you, Vietnamese fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you Vietnamese this line fuck. Yell out loud. And he caved the guy's eye in. This guy was just trying to be like, what do they call him? Like the copycat murderers? Like he's just trying to right. be like the copycat Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. He's yeah. going in and punching. Bobby. And then, he, then he bought him a hamburger. You think he wanted um, a hamburger? Oh, Wal Wahlberg. 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 Okay, I got it. Obviously, it's not the Chinese guy who was brave enough to break the stereotype and work at a 7 Eleven. Yeah. Don't yeah. Want yeah. Talk he about crossing barriers. He doesn't own it. But he works there. It's yeah, all he's good. the worst it's, Chinese guy I've ever heard of. <laughs> I don't think it's the cops. Uh, they tried. You know, they were like, hey, the guy who got punched said this wasn't probably wasn't a hate crime. We're going to try that. And then people were like, no, it is. And they were like, all right, maybe it is. At least they're listening to what people want now. Uh, I'm going to go with the guy who assaulted somebody. And it's because you got caught stealing. If he just doesn't get caught stealing, nobody gets punched in the face. Be a better thief. And like maybe apologize. And if I was going to apologize for making a hate crime, I would do it by giving somebody Silk City hot sauce. Yeah, that's why he went in. I don't know if you know this, Bobby, but that's the reason why <laughs> he went in there and was upset. He came in one day and said, do you guys have Silk City hot sauce? And the guy goes, oh, dishonorable. I have no Silk City hot sauce. Oh, I'm so sorry, son, that we have no any of the Karate Kid stance. And he's like, you don't have Silk City hot sauce? Well, I'm going to steal some other sauce from you and trade it in for Silk City. And he's like, that's not how it works. You just go to the SilkCityHotSauce.com and you put in promo code POS. And he's like, I can't understand you. Your accent's bad. He's like, oh, okay. And then he talked normal because that's like Chinese comics. They do that all the time. They pretend they're Chinese. Then they break character and it's not funny. There was a guy named Michael Young Cho who used to do that. He don't get in hit Silk City hot sauce. He wouldn't like it. But you... That's why he was mad. He went in there and he goes, you better get some tomorrow. And he goes, oh, I will. And then he comes in and he goes, you got any mango madness? And he goes, no. And he goes, you Chinese motherfucker. And punch him in the face <laughs> because he thought that they were going to make a new flavor called Chinese motherfucker sauce, which, by the way, if you know the names of their sauces, they definitely could have one. But instead, they made that just joking sauce by Kevin Dabrowski, which I hear is fantastic. And I haven't tried that one yet, but it's great. But if you guys like hot sauce, like Frank's party with the tits, you wouldn't need tits if you had Silk City hot sauce there because you'd pour it on all the food. It's amazing. They have all different kinds of flavors, locally grown stuff. It's incredible. And you go there, you buy something, you send it to friends. And if you put the promo code POS in, you save 15% off. They free, give you a free bottle of some shit. They also give you some stickers. <laughs> I forget what it is anymore. But Bobby, have you, have you tried the new one, the Kevin Dabrowski one? I haven't got a chance to try it yet. I am a big Buffalo fan, so I look forward to getting to try it. I'm also a big Kevin Dombrowski fan, so I can't think of a better pairing. I hope it doesn't taste like Kevin Dombrowski, though. And I've never tasted the man. I'm just saying. <laughs> I may I may buy some, though, using promo code 
POS. What happens if you use that promo code, Bobby? I would save 15% and get some free cherry sriracha. That's P as in please. O as in oh my God, I'm so. S as in sorry, I committed a hate crime. Yeah. POS. And if you put the promo code Chinese motherfucker in there, I don't know what you saved, but that's pretty funny. And I hope but you probably end up on a that. list. <laughs> Someone puts that in there and then they stick, you know, and they, if you put in Chinese motherfucker, they deliver it in 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> it's there right away. It's an incredible deal. You just ask for a number 38 lunch special with an egg roll. That's all you get. So you get, you got to try that out. Now, Bobby, who's you do you, you think it's the cop? No, you're not the cop. You thought it was the, the guy punching, right? I, uh, yeah, I, I made the very bold and, uh, ununderstandable statement that the guy who punched somebody was the piece of shit. It's the Chinese guy. It's the Chinese guy. No. I don't yes. know if I can stand for this hatred. It's no. not hatred. I, I see. I saw a post time, on Instagram about this. In this time, that's what's supposed to happen. How do you not? What? We don't know. Frank likes to Wait, dive what? in deep. Listen to me. <laughs> Frank likes to dive in deep, right? I'm going in deep. Deeper also than like Frank. Butters and Deeper Frank than fucking Frank with. Fuck Mark Wahlberg, all that. Do we know who this Chinese guy is? Do we? How do we not know he's the guy who ate the bat? Maybe he ate the bat and started COVID. Maybe that's him. And now he's hiding from Wuhan and he came over. Why else would a Chinese guy work at a 7-Eleven? Like you said, you brought it up. That's a weird thing for a Chinese guy to do. He's hiding because he started COVID himself by eating a bat in a cave, wherever that first story was a long time ago. And he started it. This guy, this crazed man, is a guy that's he's Fauci's son. And then he's the one that he didn't love. He let him go a long time ago. And he found out that this guy ruined everything. Thing and made his dad famous, doesn't love him anymore. So he ran into this place. And he tried to yell at him and he goes, Oh, I say you steal. It's like, I'm not stealing. I'm trying to stop you from ruining the world. It's like a sci fi movie. Jeff Goldblum was there. It was great. And then at the second time, he came in and he just yelled, Chinese motherfucker, and punched him for us so we could be hu- hugging our grandmas again. He was trying to save us. So it's the Chinese guy. Actually, can I change my answer? Is it me? No, no, no. To Frank. <laughs> okay. Frank was like, It's Mark Wahlberg's fault. He started this trend. Like, Frank wasn't alive when they were like, hey, go build these railroads. Yeah. Like- <laughs> they built really good railroads. Now, Jesse, you know that, right? Chinese people built railroads, but they didn't want to. <laughs> it wasn't like, just like that guy at the 7-Eleven. That might be the best. work there. The worst <laughs> way, but like the softest way to describe that. <laughs> yes. They built great railroads. They really didn't want to. They didn't no, want to. But they, think about that. How many times have you done a job in life and you didn't want to do it, but you did it well? I give them credit. You know what I mean? Slaves. They're better than you think. That's, that's all I'm saying here. You know who doesn't think that? Silk City Hot Sauce. They hate slaves. They do. <laughs> Most of them, I think. They they like someone that's a slave for taste. That's what they like. Does that work? Is that their new slogan? I'm a slave for taste. <laughs> uh, Jessa Butters, thank you guys so much for being on. I appreciate it. Jessa, where can people follow you? How do they sign up for your OnlyFans? Promote away. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jessa Rain X, and my OnlyFans is OnlyFans.com slash Jessa Rain X. And yeah. What can people get on there? What Frank doesn't really know what OnlyFans is. Explain to Frank what boners. Yeah. Well, they, they get their own boners. They don't get boners on there. <laughs> my OnlyFans, I post daily stuff of just pictures, videos, and then I also have my full length videos on there that. You can buy individually on my clip sites, which is one of the links is jessarainxvids.com. And then the other one is jessarainxclips.com. Nice. Frank, you can send that to people for Christmas next year. (laughs) Butters, you got anything? I got nothing. Uh, I'll be at work tomorrow uh, for eight (laughs) hours. Beyond that, I got nothing, man. Just. Anybody wants to hook up on uh, play some uh, video games or something, just hit me up on creamy at creamy butters at Twitter or something. There you go. And I'm happy you came on, my friend. I'm very happy to see you. Thank you so much for having me, man. I, I you're you're what you and uh, Brian Bowden and there's not a lot of people I stayed in contact over the years, and you guys are always fucking We're solid. The only two worth it. So that was a good. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Frank. Yo, I'm, I'm going to be at uh, Whip Hat at Comics and Mohegan Sun next Thursday, which is the 15th of yep. April. 
It's a great show. We've been packing the uh, packing the aisles down with people and come out We've and had enjoy. COVID it. sellouts, which means like a third of the room. A third of the room. It is still a sellout. <laughs> we're doing good. You couldn't perform the last one because you were too weak. So if I you was come weak. now, you could see strong Frank. I'm ready. I'm ready to get back on stage. Frank goes on and talks about fucking people's grandmothers. <laughs> and then well, I that's come the way on you afterwards. see it. I come on afterwards and I'm like, gross. Yeah. People <laughs> laugh every time. <laughs> Bobby. Check out the East Side Dave show with Roy Harder every Tuesday at 730 on Compound Media. Uh, this Friday, if you're on the Patreon, I'll be at Stand Up New York with the comedians of the Compound, hoping to get some stage time. If not, Two weeks he said from now. you were. I saw a promo that says you're doing it. Who knows? It's always up in the air. I saw I thought Aaron and Gino said the donkey will be there. I don't know for certain. I they can't guarantee the anything. They can't give it. They can't promote like that. Well, I'm going to go see the donkey show and I want to go see it. Do they call it that? Either they way, should be calling it donkey. You should come out regardless, because if not, that means there are much funnier comedians there, which isn't too hard to find. If not, Fuck come that, no, to first of all, Westchester. I'm not, I'm not letting that happen. You are Westchester, a talented, and very funny comic, and I will I will name the ones you're funnier than on that show. <laughs> no, I won't get you in trouble. But there Westchester, are Pennsylvania, <laughs> April 23rd with Dave Temple. That'll be a very fun show. Different show than you'll have seen me on before because it's a lot of new people. It'll be a lot of fun. You should come check it out. I don't usually promote other people's podcasts since you brought that up. Dave Temple and Derek Gaines' podcast is fucking hysterical. It's one of the funniest things on Gas Digital. What's it called? Uh, fuck, I forget the name now. Not sorry or something. Whatever it is, just look up them up on Gas Digital. It, it's fucking hysterical. They're so fucking funny, the two of them together. They're against yeah. you know, this amazing he's, video talking about comedy in New York and coming back. He's a, he's a brilliant fucking guy. And that video was produced by I Am Pockets, who's a great director and a producer. If you need a producer or a director for something, you should hit him up, too. Amazingly done. It was incredible. Um please everybody watch and go on the patreon if you're not there bobby and i keep telling you we have a new show coming up i don't know Is it- it's gonna come starting in may yeah as we said i'm booking March, our first guest April. now there you go but it's coming we still we're giving you more content than most fucks you're fine get around the patreon paddles patreon get on the youtube my paddles youtube there and check it out subscribe to all that stuff and if you listen and you don't watch us that's weird you should just watch it but it's still on <laughs> itunes and shit it's it's odd because right now you don't have any idea why we're saying jess is pretty you might think well maybe butters is pretty and he is in his own way we're all on our own way <laughs> except for frank frank's just creepy with the dominoes thing. frank it's always creepy that you're in front of a picture of you and that's always me it's a weird inception <laughs> thing but yeah go on there subscribe to all that stuff i've been writing uh i've been doing a writing challenge every day for 30 minutes a day i just write this fiction story that i have no plan no outline for i just write nice. and stop and then th- the next day I do 30 more minutes and I stop and I just keep continuing with no plan, whatever it's on my uh, medium page there. But if you go to my Twitter or Facebook, I share it there every day and you can check out where the story is going. I just know it's going to end with a midget in Western Massachusetts. It's the only thing I did on purpose. I don't know how <laughs> I'm getting there, but it's going to get there eventually. So check that out. Jessa butters. Thank you guys so much for being on Bobby. Remember guys, don't be a piece of shit.